Hello, I'm Jeff Boyd. I want to talk to you about an experiment for which the theory of elementary waves and quantum mechanics predict different outcomes. As of 2012, which is when this video is made, no one has yet built or conducted this experiment. In the double slit experiment, according to quantum mechanics, there are no waves and no interference prior to the emission of an electron. Once an electron is admitted, it is a wave packet and also known by Feynman as a probability amplitude, but it only comes into existence with the electron. By contrast, with the theory of elementary waves, the waves are going in the opposite direction. They start at every point on the target screen. This is because everywhere in nature there are waves of all wavelengths going in all directions. And some of them are here coming from the target screen in all directions and all wavelengths. If we limit our attention to those waves of wavelength corresponding to the electron that will later be emitted from any one point on the target screen, waves come, or rays, come forward and go through the two slits. The one through the right and the let left slit interfere over here at the particle gun, and the intensity of the impinging wave, or ray, is proportional to the probability that an electron will be stimulated to follow that ray backwards. Now, as you can easily imagine, different points on the target screen produce a different amount of interference, constructive or destructive over here, and thus the probability of stimulating an electron varies from point to point on the target screen. If an electron is triggered, it will follow that particular ray with a probability of one through the same single slit that the ray came through and back to that very point on the target screen from which the ray originated. How does an electron make a decision as to which of the different array of impinging elementary rays to respond to? The answer is, it flips a coin. Thus, there are probabilities in the theory of elementary waves or rays, but they are simple probabilities, like flipping a coin. They're easy for me to understand. I've always had trouble understanding the probabilities of quantum mechanics, the probability waves and the probability densities. By the way, to understand the theory of elementary rays, you have to start by putting aside everything you've learned from quantum mechanics. For example, there is no wave-particle duality in the theory of elementary rays. The electron is always just a particle. It always has a location and a trajectory and a momentum. There is no superposition of states. There is no wave function collapse. There is no entanglement in the theory of elementary rays or elementary waves. Now there is a more advanced and complex version of the theory of elementary rays according to which waves go in both directions, coaxial waves. But the point is, even with this version of the theory of elementary rays, all wave interference relevant to the trajectory of a given electron is finished by the time the electron is fired. So according to quantum mechanics, all wave interference and even all waves do not exist before the firing of an electron. They exist as and after the electron is fired. Whereas for the theory of elementary rays or waves, it's the opposite. All waves and wave interference relevant to the trajectory of a given electron occurs and is finished prior to or during the emission of an electron and none occurs after the emission of an electron. 
So we can use the difference in timing to differentiate or divide the two theories. If at the moment when an electron is fired here, we slam closed one of these two gates, then we will have a distinction that we can easily draw. Now, this closing of one of the two slits must occur within a nanosecond of the firing of an electron. So prior to the firing of an electron, you have elementary rays from here going through the two slits and causing interference over here. However, once an electron is fired, it's facing only one slit. The other one is closed. And according to quantum mechanics, if the electron goes through only one slit, you will have no wave interference fringe pattern on the target screen. However, according to the theory of elementary rays, under these conditions there should be some amount of interference fringe pattern visible on the target screen. Why? Because in the theory of elementary rays, interference fringe patterns occur if and only if there was interference. And at the time when the rays were going this direction, prior to the emission of an electron and prior to the closing of one of these gates, there was interference over here. I need to emphasize that it is crucial to pay attention to the timing of this experiment. If the timing is off even by one nanosecond, then the results that are produced will probably be rubbish. They will tell us nothing. A graduate student in physics told me with great assurance that this experiment has already been conducted. I looked up his references in the physics literature and it's not true. The experiment may remind him and other people of experiments that they have read in the physics literature, but those other experiments have not paid attention to the one nanosecond critical timing of this experiment. It might sound impractical at first to close one of these gates at precisely the one nanosecond when an electron is emitted. One possible experimental design is to put a powerful laser up here that will fire down and the power of the beam will close this slit at precisely that moment when an electron is emitted. You might think that if this experiment was built and conducted by someone and if the results were what I think they would be, which is to support the theory of elementary waves and be unexplainable by quantum mechanics, you might think that would be the first time in history that such results have been found. But no, there are other experiments published in the physics literature which cannot be explained by quantum mechanics because they only make sense if you think that the waves and the particles are going in opposite directions. For example, there's an experiment by Kaiser et al. published in 1992 which you can find by looking on my website lwave.org. So how could it be that experiments have already been conducted and published which quantum mechanics cannot explain but TEW can? Well, the blunt fact of it is, unless you have a theory, you cannot see the obvious things that are staring you in the face. So in summary, I've designed and presented to you a an experiment for which the theory of elementary rays and the theory of quantum mechanics predict different outcomes. It's based on the idea of when waves and wave interference takes place relative to the firing of an electron. It must be fired one electron at a time. According to quantum mechanics, the waves and wave interference occurs during or after the firing of the electron uh, according to the theory of elementary rays, it's before or during the firing of the electron.
But according to the theory of elementary waves, there is no further wave interference of any relevance after an electron has been fired. And therefore, we differentiate or distinguish between the two theories by closing one of these slits with a powerful laser at that nanosecond when an electron is fired. And this would be producing, according to quantum mechanics, no interference fringe pattern on the target screen. But according to the theory of elementary rays, there would be some amount of interference fringe pattern evident on the target screen. As of 2012, this experiment has never been conducted. Thank you very much for your time and attention.